17 Anderson Township Zoning Commission. First uh, approval of the agenda. Motion. Okay. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. All right. <coughs> we just do all in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. So the agenda is approved. Next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the October 23rd, 2017 Zoning Commission meeting. It does appear we have three of the five attendees. So uh, any comments concerning the minutes? I don't have any. None. Could you call roll, please? Ms. McBride? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Reagan? Abstain. Mr. Green? Yes. Abstain. <clears throat> With that, we'll go into public hearing of case one, 2015. <coughs> okay. So anyone given testimony, we will need you to swear in. Um, sorry, there's a script I have to read and Luckily, I've not memorized it, so. Uh, skip through right to the. Okay. So, upon hearing the case first outlined by the commission meeting members um, to the commission from staff, the zoning resolution will be our basis for any decisions. Uh, if it's subject to appeal to the Board of Township Trustees and then to the Court of Common Pleas. As a result, we must employ different procedures in other cases that are typically presented to the Zoning Commission. It is a quasi-judicial proceedings. The Commission will only receive evidence as to whether the application meets or does not meet the standards and criteria in the zoning resolution. We do not want to hear opinions as facts. As a result, all persons presenting testimony before the Commission for or against uh, will be sworn in and subject to cross-examination. The staff will present a summary of the application. The applicant will then present its case. The board members may ask questions of the staff and anyone who speaks on behalf of the applicant. If an attorney is present, the case of presents the case for the applicant. The attorney is not sworn in and is not considered to be a witness. As a result, the attorney's statements are not considered as evidence. Evidence only comes in through the witnesses who testify before the commission after being sworn in. The burden is on the applicant to present the evidence that the application satisfies the standards and criteria for the approval. After the applicant presents its case through its witnesses, all persons in the audience supporting the application will be per permitted to testify one at a time. Any persons that are opposed then will be allowed to testify again one at a time. As previously stated, all persons wishing to testify whether for or against the application may only, be, may only do so after being sworn in. When testifying, each person from the audience must come forward to the podium after being recognized, speak to the microphone, and state their name, address, and any affiliation to the case. All persons testifying will be limited to four minutes unless a commission member requests that it be given more additional time. All testimony is to be directed to the commission only. No comments or questions directed to the applicant or anyone else in the audience. The commissioner will only hear new and non-repetitive evidence, which should be easy tonight. And then now any persons that will be giving testimony this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. Stand up, please. Okay. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. So help you God? Yes. Okay. I do. With that, uh, staff will present case 1 2015 PUD. Thank you. <coughs> the applicant is David Hook with Look Media, who is representing Anderson Investors, the property owner, as well as Tri Health. And the, the banners, um, the request is actually for Tri Health on the Anderson Investors property. The location is at 7500 Beachmont Avenue, and the zoning there is EPUD Retail, which is, plan, or is Retail Plan Unit Development. And the request is to display, this is a major adjustment to a PUD, and it's to display 12 new temporary pole banners uh, on the site. So a little bit of the zoning history, a PUD plan was approved for this property in 2015. 
and this was with the expansion of the additional retail shops as well as the the movie theater because the expansion of the property was more than 60 percent a PUD was requested for the property and approved when a, a PUD a plan is applied to a property any change not consistent with that original approval or um, if any variances are needed in the future an adjustment is needed to that PUD plan so the request uh, and then following that actually in September there was an adjustment to the original plan and this was primarily for signage this was for extra freestanding signs a monument style sign entryway sign off of town center way as well as the processional signs that you see down the main uh, streetscape areas of the town center so the request tonight is <coughs> temporary banners these are pole banners um, that would be installed for a period of three months they're approximately 21 square feet um, they are considered temporary signage and for um, retail zone properties a maximum of 32 square feet per property is permitted for up to 48 days a year with frontage of over 400 feet you are permitted one sign um, one additional sign with this particular property they could have three of the 32 square foot signs as of right as permitted by the underlying zoning um, with this particular request again they're requesting a 21 um, square foot sign to attach to the to the banner or to the poles so this is a cages map which actually has not been updated to reflect the um, movie theater so we do have an updated aerial so we'll just go to the updated aerial this is Beachmont Avenue to the south this is five mile road and town center way this is Kroger uh, Macy's this is um, the sky zone area this is the main streetscape coming in off of Beachmont as well as the main streetscape coming in off of five mile in the movie theater tri health has expanded their um, presence in the Hemmer professional buildings which are these buildings here they have connected the two buildings and are not occupying the space a hundred percent but are, are um, the main tenant in this building now and they have uh, an outpatient surgery center that has recently opened and <coughs> that is the intent of the banners to advertise the grand opening of the tri health uh, uh, location this area here in this particular area the parking garage was under construction but it is finished and it is open this is the existing zoning as EPUD to the north where the towns or where Anderson Center is is zoned retail to the east is zoned a mixture of single-family multi-family and planned retail same to the west and then to the south um, the same except that office zoning is also present so the red X's demonstrate the areas where the banners are proposed uh, this site plan this is Beachmont Avenue here and five mile so there would be three Poe banners along five mile there would be four on the Beachmont area one located in the service area behind Kroger and then two located behind the movie theater um, that would be visible from town center away and then two uh, here in front of the um, movie theater again the, the poles are three feet by seven feet 21 square feet this is not actually what the banner would say but this was an example <laughs> of the size <coughs> the hardware that would be used to attach to the light poles and these are samples of banners that have been used elsewhere in, in other areas to give an example of, of what they may look like the final design for this banner has not uh, been created is my understanding until approval um, or a decision from the Zoning Commission has been made these are some of the site photos these are the two poles behind the movie theater between the movie theater and the parking garage along five mile by Macy's and then this is located uh, between CVS and Starbucks along the, the drive that goes uh, to Verizon Starbucks and then over to Kroger so um, since this is not complying with the zoning resolution an adjustment to the PUD is required 
These are the two articles that pertain to temporary signage for commercial properties. One um, describes the size, the total 32 square feet that is permitted. And then the second um, reference is the length of time, which is 48 days per year. There have been other displays of temporary signage on this property by other tenants. And then also some of the tenants allow for the high school to display temporary signs for a, a play production or um, some other type of event at, at either Anderson High School or Turpin <coughs> High School. So some of the individual tenants actually allow for display, the use of their temporary sign allotment for other uses. So again, that would be, uh, this would take that property over the allotted time and square footage for the signs. So in looking at this, we look at all of the plans that are adopted. Uh, so the applicable plans for this particular area are the comprehensive plan which staff was of the opinion that this did add to the vitality of the town center as well as advertising a new, a new business to the area. You can see the uh, sections that we picked out in the zoning um, in the staff report, land use and development. Um, the second plan that we looked at was the downtown Anderson plan, which the town center does fall within the downtown plan. And there are design guidelines, specifically signage, and the town center does have a sign package approved, but it is somewhat unique to um, the, the entire township with its freestanding signs, its processional signs, and then also the, uh, it has the entrance signs at the, for, at the three main entrances, but it also has freestanding signs for the individual tenants. So th this whole property has, you know, a sign package that was approved. So staff was of the opinion that the, the banners are consistent with the PUD that was approved as well as the adopted plans. A variance would be needed from these two articles, Article 5.5E11A <coughs> and then 5.5E11B regarding the size of the banners as well as the length of the display period. And the reasons for granting a variance are also listed below. And then these uh, are just the general standards for grain and variance. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Commissioner, have any questions of staff? Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. With that, if the applicant would like to present their case, oh, sure. please um, again come to the microphone, state your name, address, and affiliation to the case. Uh, okay, so my name is Michael Baker. Uh, I'm the owner of Look Media. Um, David put the application in for us, and uh, I've come out here to speak with you guys today. Our, my, our address, our company address is um, uh, 330 West 38th Street, Suite 1500, New York, New York, uh, 10018. Um, so first of all, it's really nice to be back in Ohio. I actually grew up in Cleveland, and uh, my brother's here in Cincinnati, so whatever comes of this, I get to have dinner with him tonight. <laughs> um, and you know, it really, it's pretty straightforward what we want to do. I think Paul did a great job, you know, very thorough putting together the presentation um, after, from our application. And um, you know, I started Look Media because I wanted uh, media formats that uh, reach people in a way that they accept, uh, that it doesn't just feel like advertising. And so when we did the poll banners, we selected that about seven years ago we started because we thought it enhanced the environment and that people would respond positively to it. And we've since uh, worked with a lot of different developers, at least 30 or 40 around the country, including some of the biggest ones from Simon property on down, uh, but particularly those that own shopping centers, uh, Phillips Edison, De developers diversified, um, uh, Weingarten, Regency, Kimco, Bricksmore, and, and so on. And uh, we, they, they really like working with us because uh, they feel the same way, that the banners make the shopping center look good. And uh, the advertisers uh, or the brands, often it's for grand openings, sometimes it's for off-premise, but they like it because, um, you know, people are open to a commercial message when they're going shopping. Um, and so, you know, that's why we, we spend our time doing this and, you know, we hope that you guys grant us the variance. Um, obviously, Tri, Tri Health is a, uh, a big tenant at the shopping center and they have a, you know, a positive business that they're doing in the medical field uh, and they've just invested in this really nice center that I got to see coming over here. And, you know, I hope, uh, I hope you guys help us out. So that's really all I have to say, but thank you very much. Commission, any questions of the applicants? I just have two. Yeah. 
Um, so what happens to the brackets after the three months? You take everything down? We take everything back, yeah. Okay. So and then it goes to another location somewhere okay. else. Yeah. And then um, the other question, how come there aren't any in front of TriHealth? How come there aren't any in front of TriHealth? I think probably because of the signage on the building or maybe it was the choice of um, the property owner that, you know, we, we went back and forth with them saying like, oh, here's where they'd like to put them. They asked us to put them all over Starbucks and they said, no, you can't put them there. You have to put them here, there. And we, we sort of went back and forth for a little bit first. Because some, some of the locations are kind of unusual. The one behind the Kroger liquor store, I, <laughs> I don't know who's going to see that. Well, <laughs> I, you know. Um, Store. And the ones between the movie theater and the parking structure, you know. I mean, it, I'm fine to relocate those. It, well, it, ju it just would seem to me that it would be, you know, good to have some in front of the actual Tri Health building. But that's just. We're, we're happy to do that. That's just a zoning consultant's opinion. Yeah. So there you go. That was part of my <coughs> questions as well. Were how did you come up with 12 and, and the location, the density? It, to me, it, may, it seems like a little bit of overkill, but. Uh, uh, are the messages the same on each of the 12? So I haven't seen the creative yet. Um, usually they do the same creative. Sometimes it might be one thing on one side of the banner and one thing on the other. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure because the agency hasn't created that yet. Sure. Yeah. And then I had a, I guess I had a follow-up question then back to staff. Are we concerned about, again, with the location of these that affects maybe some of the, uh, the traffic flows, right? So we would encourage people going to try health would probably come down five mile tenure that way versus coming through the town center unless they were doing something else the same trips well uh, uh, town center way um, is meant to be an alternative entrance into the back of the town center right. uh, the, and this actually the road the township will be resurfacing and, and reconstructing it next year so all three frontages five mile beach mine and five mile road uh, I'm sorry, Five Mile, Beachmont, and Town Center Way are all meant to be main entrances into the Town Center. It just, from my, I, I and, thought and in the, front of Kroger's and that entrance, we want to, you know, Town Center Way is perfect mm -hmm. coming out Five Mile. It, it, right, and, and there's, um, right, if you're coming um, from Wolf Angle, Town Center Way is really the direct route to get over to Tri Hill. Same way from Five Mile, you know, coming in here. Um, the, the, the other question that so this property here is that's whited out that's actually owned by Hemmer Paul Hemmer who owns the buildings where Tri Health is a tenant and we do not have a letter from them authorizing the application we only have a letter from Victory <laughs> who owns the town center so the banners would need to remain on the town center property and then Kroger also owns their parcel. So th this application would not involve the Kroger parcel or the Hammer pro parcel. It would only involve the, the Anderson Town Center parcel. To, to answer your question about how we chose how many banners, um, basically we look at the gross leasing area of shopping centers and then we have like a formula that says per square footage, we recommend this many banners. And typically we sell them in sets of six. So it's like six, 12, maybe more. And it's up to the sales rep too. You know, the more they sell, the better they do their job. Sure, so, yeah. in this case. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great, thanks. Sure, thank you. Yes. Yes, um, so with the way the zoning regulation is currently written, how many signs would be allowed um, in this square footage? Do you know? Uh, yeah, so if I understand um, Paul's writing, they're entitled to uh, 332 square foot um, signs, but you know, if you do the math, that's like four and a half banners, so mm -hmm. it's a bit more than, uh, than, than double, but, and, we're, and they're allowed to be up for 48 days, and we're requesting for um, three months, or well, 12 weeks. So, yeah. Um, and also, is it typical for healthcare organizations to utilize this sort of advertising? Yeah, so actually this is one of our biggest uh, segments that we sell to. And um, the photos before that you saw were all healthcare clients around the country. So it's a very popular format for them. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mr. Brown. Good. Could I, could I ask? Oh, sorry, Paul. No, question. Sorry, I need to jump in there. Paul, so will this use up then the allotment for the town center for temporary signs for a year? I, I, my interpretation is this is an exception just for this, okay. and, and it, it would because not. Because they've got a lot of other tenants exactly. in there. So, I no, I, I would say this is an adjustment, you know, just for this particular case, and it wouldn't impact their other uh, 
signage and opportunities. And the fact that it's off-premise isn't a problem? No. Okay. So you have no idea on what the, the banners will look like as, as far as colorization, oh, images? Um, you know, they uh, we asked them to do a simple mock-up for us, and the answer is always, like, it's going to look like their website. It's going to have the same colors that are in there. It'll have their logo, probably, and it'll probably have wording saying that they've opened a surg surgical outpatient center. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't know exactly what it's going to say, but we can certainly share that with you as soon as we have it. Um, but it's always a chicken or the egg. You know, they don't want to invest mm -hmm. in making the banners until they know they can put them up. So, yeah. Hard to approve a banner if you don't know what it looks like. So oh, I see. Um, well, I mean, I would, if you can flip back uh, to that slide before, I think it'd be very similar to these. So mm -hmm. you can, the, up on the upper left was in Tennessee. That was for um, an ER for an urgent care opening. Um, on the upper right, it's for UT Southwest uh, in, in Fort Worth. On the lower left, it's in the Philadelphia, or no, sorry, that's in Connecticut. Uh, and on the lower right is Philadelphia area. And so these are all, you know, relatively uh, conservative looking messages and pretty straightforward. We have others where they put, you know, pict pictures of children. We did one out in LA for Miller Children's Hospital. Um, we, we've done some for, um, uh, where they're, they're featuring orthopedics for sports medicine. And so they've got portraits of the doctors. So each banner has a different doctor on it, looking friendly and professional. So it's typically that type of stuff. Um, and so the reason I put this in here with all healthcare clients was because I think this is a pretty good proxy for what it's going to look like. Do you know when the three months the clock starts and stops? Well, because it's a grand opening, they'd like to post as soon as possible. And so I actually wanted to ask uh, the board um, when, I don't know the you know, process very well as well as you guys do. And so when was the soonest we could post, we would post. Like we could put them up in two weeks, basically. We'd have to produce and ship the brackets out and hang them, and then they'd be up for 90 days. But you know, you tell me when we can start. That'll be the first question my client That's asks me in the morning. Staff. You'd be able to tell them when you could start based on approval or? Based off of a decision tonight, we can have a resolution sign three to four days and then issue design certificates once a resolution sign. Okay, wonderful. Anything about the appeal, even from the public, that is not in presence? Mm -hmm. Or is it? I think they could go at their own risk. <laughs> I agree with you. Okay, any other questions from the commission? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak in favor of the application? Anyone opposed? He wasn't sworn in. We're seeing no other people. Um, we'll close the public hearing at this time. And amongst the commission, any discussion topics? If I just concur with you. It's, it's, it's probably a minor risk, but not seeing a mock-up of what actually if it's a universal message or 12 different ones, and if it's a one out of 12 that is somehow offensive, but we approved it without seeing it. We, we can't control content. Right. We can they can put whatever they want right. on those I'm banners. Saying, mm -hmm. like it's like the saying. skyline um, painted mural that isn't what we approved. Oh, is it? No, it's oh. not at all what we approved. <laughs> um, as people say, I can show you a picture of it on my phone. But at any rate, um, but we, can't, can, we can't control the content. We can control the number. We can control the size. We can control the location. But we can't control what they say. So um, I guess with that, I would make a motion that we approve case 1-2015 PUD major amendment to the Anderson Town Center, 7500 Beachmont Avenue, including variances to Article 5.5 E11A and Article 5.5 E11B, based on staff's recommendations. Second. Call roll, please. Ms. McBride? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Boone? Yes. Mr. Gothard? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy your dinner with your brother. Um, any other? There December. There. December 18th. December, right. I think we're expecting the final development plan for Stonecrest in December. And that meeting was moved up a week because of Christmas, so it's December the 18th. If we do not receive that application by the deadline, I'll be sure to let you know. That's the only one that I, I think is out there. What is the deadline? Um, it's actually this coming um, Monday. Let me, let me 
Uh, no. I'm sorry, it was today. So that may not happen. Good. Then we have to simper off. Okay. <laughs> that may actually, right, with, the, with it being moved up. So um, that may be January. I'll let you know. If for some reason it comes in tonight or something, I'll just let you know. Um, I think that's it. Okay. With that, uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.